Thanks for the support as a channel member, Josh Harwood. The best news any of you could have hoped for. Soma's is injured, so Gomez has to play for a while. Hello and welcome to part 140 of Born Again. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we are away against Valencia in the Champions League and then at home against Norwich in the Premier League. Since you were last with me, we have become a good football team. I think we became a good football team over the summer, but we're now really starting to establish ourselves as a good football team. October was a lovely month where we won every game, only conceded two goals. Uh, Soma started scoring. Gomez is back in the team. He's scoring. Senna Jackie started scoring a lot. And uh, we are, we're looking good in all competitions. This is what the Premier League looks like. 11 games gone. We're fourth in the league. Yes, we're 11 points behind Manchester United, who have absurdly won their first 11 games in a row, despite finishing in seventh place last year, I think. They've done a similar job to what Manchester... No, it was Arsenal the year before, wasn't it? Who've now dropped back down again. Um, last year, Arsenal came from nowhere and won the league easily. Manchester United, it's inexplicable. I don't know how the AI can just come in and turn a club around that quickly. But apparently it can, and we're seeing a lot of it in this save. But as long as we're getting in the Champions League each year at the moment, we're not ready to win the Premier League yet. We're getting closer, um, but we're not quite there. So I'm happy to just be in the mix. It certainly makes a change from the last couple of seasons when we've not been anywhere near and had to really fight for it. We're also looking good in the Champions League, where we've won all of our first three games. We are top of our group. Juventus have had a terrible time of it. Three points from their first three games and really starting to worry and will almost certainly be cheering us on today against Valencia, even though it means we'll, we're likely qualified if we can find it, if we can get a win against Valencia. But if Valencia beat us here, especially if Juventus don't get a result in their game, Juventus are potentially in trouble, which would be a bit mad, really. But... I could certainly live with it. I don't care as long as we get through and we're looking good. If we can win one more of our games in this Champions League, then we've we've got to be feeling pretty confident. And having already beaten Juventus and Valencia at home, we've got to be confident of beating Hoffenheim. So even if this Valencia game doesn't go our way, I don't think it's going to go down to the wire against Juventus at the end of the group. I think we're going to have things wrapped up before then. I hope we're going to have things wrapped up before then. So this is the team we're taking to Valencia, um, uh, the team that has been doing so well for so very long. Um, as you can see, the rest of the world has now decided they want all our players, particularly Chinese clubs. Valencia want Giladucci, um, PSG and Barcelona in for Steinman, Borussia Mönchengladbach for Ricardo, PSG for Sen and Jackie. The, the Shanghai club were in for more than just one player before, but apparently, oh no, they want him as well and him. So, yeah, there's uh, Swansea one and song. Um, that, that's, that's a little bit of a difference in quality between all of these players who are wanted by Paris Saint-Germain or big money moves to China. Swansea one and song. He never did quite make it, did he? So we're going with Bakita in goal, a back four of Giladucci, De Silva, Diaz and Arango. Addo at the base of the midfield. Ricardo and Steinman ahead of him and Cook, Serna Jackie and Gomez are our front three. Cook has been playing very well of late. I know he started the season um, on the bench with Ricardo playing on that left wing, but He's forced his way back in, forcing Ricardo to drop back into central midfield because we all know I'm a bit of a Ricardo fan, which means we then have uh, Sarmiento and Ariel both battling for that role in there. Um, right. Interestingly, there's not an underdog team talk we can give. So I guess we talk about securing qualification. Perhaps we're that much better than Valencia that we should be able to just win the group today and not worry about anything else. Gomez has been clattered there. That's got to be a red card, surely. Straight red, five minutes on the clock, and Valencia are down to ten men, and it was a horrific. I mean, it was it was pretty clear to me that was an attempt to injure Christian Gomez and take him out of the game, but it hasn't injured him, and they're down to ten men for the rest of the game, which does make things a little bit more straightforward for us. Hopefully, um, I'm almost tempted to go to, to a more attacking version of the system, but we won't worry about it just yet. Giladucci plays it into Ricardo, back to Giladucci again, um, who's found Addo in space. There's Steinman who scores, and it's 1-0 to Bourne against 10 men Valencia, only 11 minutes gone. And as of right now, we are looking good to book a spot in the knockout rounds pretty early on in this Champions League campaign. I don't think anybody would have predicted this Champions League campaign going as well as it is. Or if it did, 
you wouldn't have predicted the fact we'd be doing quite well in the Premier League as well. To be able to compete on two fronts, that's why we've that's why we've bloated our squad out as much as we have this year. It, I know there's always going to be criticism of Soma because you all love Gomez, but having two really good strikers is going to help us compete on two fronts. There's the second goal, and it's Ricardo who's been getting a little bit of stick in the comments lately. There's his answer to that stick, and it's Valencia nil, born two, and this. This could get very messy for Valencia today. They've lost a defender. They're down to 10 men and we are all over them already. I guess it just comes down to whether or not we decide to take mercy on them, take pity on them. We don't. We, we, want, we, want, we want goals. We want to just keep playing well and keep scoring. So we're just going to keep attacking. That's what we do. Cook flying down the left-hand side. Nobody can get anywhere near him. Cook dances past his man. Cross come over for Serna Jackie. There's less than 15 minutes gone in this game and we're 3-0 up. We are going through to the knockout rounds today, boys and girls. It won't be mathematically there because theoretically Valencia could still catch us, but we'll be ahead of them on goals difference. We'll be ahead of them on head-to-head. I don't know which one you use. I think it's head-to-head in the Champions League and this will be us defeating Valencia twice. Juventus theoretically could catch us if they beat Hoffenheim. But again, we've already got a win over Juventus as well. So they'd have to absolutely batter us. And in fact, even with that, Valencia still couldn't catch us. So regardless of what happens in the Juventus game, I think if we win here, and it looks like we're going to, we're through. Even though it will still be a six-point gap. It'd be interesting if the game recognises that or if it waits until the points difference is right. But there'll be no way for Valencia to catch us. There's already no way for Hoffenheim to catch us. So even if Juventus can finish above us, the worst we could do is finish second. So as long as we don't bottle it from here, we're in the knockout round. As I say, I think as I say the word bottle, the ball hit the back of our net. So let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. It would be one of the great bottle jobs if we managed to throw a three-goal lead against 10 men. But, you know, we've done worse over the years. I'm sure we've done worse. We'll do worse again. Let's just hope we don't do worse today. Ricardo trying to poke it through for Cook, but it was actually quite a poor pass. Um, Arango does manage to clean up the mess, though, and play it all the way back to Bakita, who's got multiple options ahead of him. He can take his pick. He finds Addo, who's dropped deep, to get the ball moving. And we move the ball around very nicely in midfield. I think Addo, I know he's expensive, even a very good addition to this team, and does make us play better. So I said I wanted him to come in and do the Vermonti role. Yes, he's cost us a fortune, but he is doing that Vermonti role very, very well. And he's young. He's only going to get better at it as he gets older. Steinman now plays it into Arango. Who, there's suspicion of offside there for Arango, but he's given it to Serna Jackie. And we're so good today, Serna Jackie scored with his standing foot. It's it's 4-1 after less than 20 minutes of this football match. And <laughs> this this could be the longest episode of the series because this is going to be a long, a long highlight, a long match. A long live commentary because we're just going to keep scoring goals. Go, you haven't even seen Gomez yet. That's the really scary thing. Apart from drawing the red card, that's Gomez's only contribution in these first 20 minutes and we've scored four goals. That's how good the rest of the team is getting now. It's a beautiful thing. Right, Valencia on the attack again. But that's a poor pass that if Cook can nick the ball back here, we could be away. But in actual fact, he couldn't. But Arango can and plays it clear, but not to any of our players. This is That's where we potentially missed having a player in that little pocket of space. But Gomez wins the ball back and he's just going to run. Christian Gomez, if he scores there. Goodness me, if he scores there. We've only had six shots and we've scored four of them. But those six shots have been three clear-cut chances and three half chances. So we're creating high-quality opportunities and for once we're actually converting them. And like I say, we've turned into a good side. We're getting used to playing this vertical tiki-taka and it, I think the the combination of that and Addo getting used to us, us getting used to Addo, the two of them combined is just making us get better and better. And Steinman plays it out to Arango. We play such nice football now. I love watching it. And there's Arango with number five before half time. And I think Hoffenheim are ahead against Juventus, which is huge. Juventus are definitely in trouble. Four games deep and only three points on the board. Someone's getting sacked at Juventus, surely. I think I saw a media report. I can't remember if it's in this save now because I've got so many saves going on. But I'm like 80% sure Zinedine Zidane is the new Juventus manager this season. 
and he's surely got to be in trouble if they don't make it out of their Champions League group. Don't get complacent. Hoffenheim are loving life because they've left themselves with an opportunity. They'll fancy their chances. If they can hold on to this scoreline against Juventus, they're 2-0 up away against Juventus. They've got us to play next, knowing that we'll have already qualified and could conceivably play a rotated team in our game against Hoffenheim, depending on how it falls with fixtures in the Premier League and things like that. We don't need to... We don't need to bust our backsides in the Champions League now because we're already done. So Hoffenheim will be looking at our game thinking that's doable. And then in their final game, they've effectively got a playoff against Valencia where we play Juventus. They'll be looking for us to do them a favour against Juventus. And if they can go and beat Valencia, Hoffenheim could yet be the other team who comes through from this group. This is the most exciting Champions League group. I think I've ever been involved in so many different permutations of things that could happen. Serna Jackie shoots from range from the free kick. I think it was always going wide, but the goalkeeper has pushed it round the post anyway. So we get a corner and it's Serna Jackie to take. Corner comes over. It eludes everybody on both teams. It is, I think we, we need to have a word with ourselves there because that's bounced inside the penalty area. And no one's got anywhere near it. The defending's questionable. But the fact we didn't have an attacker there to just poke it into the back of the net... He's just as questionable. Steinman now looking to get some forward momentum. Again, it falls to Ricardo. He's had a very good game. And Ricardo, rather than squaring it to Gomez, who was unmarked, tried to have a little shot at the, uh, at the near post and probably should have been looking for Christian Gomez. But at 5-1 up, I don't mind people having a little bit of creative fun and trying to score fancy goals. So I'm not going to complain too much. Ricardo plays it into Steinman, who's been getting so much time and space in this midfield, presumably because we're playing against 10 men. Gomez gets it into the back of the net, but it's been disallowed for offside, I think. Um, but yeah, I think they, I think Steinman is probably the one who's benefiting most from being the extra man, as they've had to sacrifice someone from their midfield to uh, to shore up the defence. And Steinman, he's just having so much fun in that midfield. Gomez can come off. Janino's going to come on, see if he can grab himself a goal. Uh, we might as well take Dios, Diaz off and bring on Nixon Burke as well. Get Nixon Burke a Champions League run out. Why not? Um, I guess Bonilla would be the other one who hasn't played really any football for us yet. So let's take Addo off and bring him on and get some game time into him. 15 minutes to go. We'll drop a little bit of praise. Cook with a free kick. Looking for De Silva. Doesn't find him. Serna Jackie picks it up. Plays it back to Benia, who is just stood between the two defenders the way Addo was doing. He knows how to play that role. We've got two of them who can do it. And it's a, it's lovely. Cook with the cross. There's Serna Jackie. And that is Serna Jackie's hat trick. It's Valencia 1, born 6. We are in the knockout rounds of the Champions League. And we have done it in style. That is... Um, I mean, Serna Jackie's good, isn't he? He's good at football, but Cook has been very good again. Ricardo's been excellent in central midfield. It's going to be difficult for either Ariel, Sarmiento, either of them to force their way past Ricardo in the form he's been in today. Ricardo's been a different player playing in central midfield, a role we've never really used him in ever. He's always been out on either wing or in the attacking midfield spot. This is one of his first opportunities to play in central midfield, and he's been really, really good at it in that Mazala role. You've got to take it all with a little bit of a pinch of salt because we know we're outnumbering them in midfield, which is why Steinman's having so much of the ball as well. But it's still been a very good performance by everybody involved. Right, let's get the tackle in. Let's go and grab number seven. None of this letting Valencia attack. Cook's got the ball again, plays it forward for Serna Jackie, who's just going to run at the defence. It's the last thing you want to see when you've already conceded six goals. Ricardo's in again, but... The last-ditch tackle forces it out for a corner, and it's going to be Serna Jackie to come across and take yet another corner. This is our eighth corner of the game. Looking at the near post this time, where De Silva was lurking, but couldn't quite direct his uh, his header goalwards. And it's a hat trick for Serna Jackie, a hat trick of assists for Cook, goals for Arango, Steinman, Ricardo. We didn't need a striker today. It didn't matter whether it was Gomez or Soma. We've become, we've spent four years relying on our striker, whereas now we're just a good team. And if we have a striker who scores, it's fine. But as we showed with Bayern Munich in non league to legend, when we had, um, what's his face up front? Can't even remember his name. Thorgerson, was that his name? Um, the striker doesn't need to score in this system. It, as long as you've got wingers who are going to score and we've got Serna Jackie. So how important even is the striker? There you go. There's your confirmation. We are in the knockout rounds as well. The game could figure it out. 
but it is all to play for for the other three teams still in this group. <laughs> so a couple of changes for the Norwich game then, and fingers crossed, touch wood, we've not really suffered from a Champions League hangover this year, and I've actually done something that kind of feels counterintuitive to what I normally do, and we're not changing the team very much after Champions League games, and it seems to be working. So we're not changing the team very much today. What's what's up with Sam and Jackie? Reacted badly to my last chat. What was my last chat? I've promised him that I'll play youth players in the first team. When have I promised him that? What is going on? Everyone else is happy. Why? Why? Why have I promised him I'll play youth players in the first team? I don't understand. Oh, because of the dressing room leader, Paul Mira, leaving the club. But, I mean, Steinman just stepped up and became a team leader in his place. We don't need to play youth players. I think I said to him, don't worry, we don't need to replace Mira. We've got other people who will fill that void. And he's interpreted that as, I'll play youth players. It's not what I meant, Mita, you silly, silly boy. Right, as I was saying, team, not changed very much. Uh, Bonilla is in the team, though, because as you can see, he's, uh, he's a little bit unhappy, where's his promise, that he's not been playing very much. So he can come in, gives me the opportunity to try Addo a little bit further forward, which I've talked about doing a little bit before. And we'll just stick Ricardo out on that left-hand side. Um, Cook can drop down out of the team entirely because... There's no room for him. There's no room for him on that bench. Um, but Cook, Cook's been, you know, how injured he's been in recent years. It won't do him, him any harm to have a little bit of a rest. If I wasn't resting him, I'd be resting Serna Jackie entirely. But I'm always a little bit allergic to doing that. Right, go out there, win this game. We've gone back to our attacking instruction today. We've kind of got into a system of if we're at home, we play an attacking version of this tactic. If we're away against a lesser team, we play attacking. If we're away against a team that have got a good chance of beating us, then we drop down to a balanced mentality. There have been a couple of games where we've actually done the balanced at home as well, specifically, I think, against Arsenal and Liverpool, I think. So again, against really big teams at home, we'll go balanced as well. But generally, if it's a game where we're supposed to score a lot of goals, we're going to try and push on and score a lot of goals. That's the theory. It seems to be working okay. Right, Bonilla to Arango, who's looking to get something going down this right-hand side. Plays it back to Bonilla, who gives it to Steinman. He's playing a little bit too far forward and squashing up alongside these two at the moment, which is not ideal. Arango, though, trying to overlap on the right-hand side. Doesn't succeed. And now Norwich have got the opportunity to get a break down this right. They'll love this because we signed Arango from them. So getting a goal down the side he's supposed to be defending after his mistake. They'll love every minute of that. And it's born nil, Norwich won. And it's because I mentioned the Champions League hangover not being a thing. That, or it could be that I've made too many changes by changing two. But by doing two changes, that is too much. I mean, really, it's not even two changes, is it? It's one change. Bonilla's come in for Cook, and then I've shuffled the rest of the team around a little bit. That can't be too many changes. We made, too many, we made more changes than that just for standard games. Bonilla brings it down nicely there, finds Addo, um, Ricardo trying to keep things going as well, doesn't. <laughs> Giladucci picks it up from his mess. The problem we've got when we have Giladucci and Ricardo on that right hand side is on that left hand side is they're both right footed. So we do lose a bit of natural width on that side. We've won a penalty here though, and it's Arango making up for his previous mistake. And uh Christian Gomez. Yes, he's still on penalties because he's still the best penalty taker at the club. Come on, Christian, prove everybody wrong. For goodness sake, when will I learn? When will I learn? People keep telling me there must be a hidden attribute that means he can't take penalties. There really must be. He's coming off at half time now, because the other thing we've learned is every time he misses a penalty, he goes on to have a horrific game. I might take him off penalties now. I've got to show faith in him, though. We all love Christian Gomez. <laughs> uh, where's the passion lads and there's no point in you still being on the pitch because you won't do anything now so Janino can come on because the game just really punishes people for missed penalties and there's just there's no recovering from it 
which is why Janino just comes straight on. Cerna Jackie now with a little short, not well, not a short corner, but a near post corner. And um, we've actually switched to a mixed corner instruction after a long, long time of aiming for the far post and not really working. We aimed for the near post for a bit. That wasn't really working, but we've just got a defender on each post now um, and we're doing mixed corners. So I'm hoping that we've got enough heading quality that we don't have to just try and exploit the one good guy who's good in the air now. We can try and mix it up a little bit and hopefully let Serna Jackie use his natural intelligence to pick the right ball. And there's Janino, and I thought that was just going to sneak over the line, but the keeper's just pushed it wide of the post. We have a corner, though, and it is Serna Jackie to take, um, who's gone for the, I don't know if that's a near post or a middle of the goal one. It was kind of between the two. Serna Jackie um, trying to get the ball back in again. He's been clattered there and he's going to get a free kick. Um, so everyone's just stay forward, everyone. We don't even get to see the free kick highlight. Ridiculous. Right. Demand more. We should be doing better than this. Norwich are not very good. We are very good. We should be winning this game. Champions League hangover, etc., etc. Cerna Jackie plays it all the way back to Diaz again. I've just talked about his good decision making. That was not a good decision. Diaz to Benia. We need to, I think we probably need to get an attacking option on in central midfield. We've got our three most defensive players in there. And it shows. Addo's dropped very wide there, though. And there's Janino scoring a Gomez style goal. It's the slide tackle goal that made Christian Gomez famous. Janino still tiny, as you can see from his celebration. But it's his second goal of the season. And hopefully this is the year that Janino really starts to push on and score a few goals. It's his second goal of the season already. I think that's as many league goals as both Soma and Gomez have got. So you could argue at the moment we've got three strikers and there's not a lot between them. Um, we've also got Sebastiao, who's nowhere near the team at the moment, who's our young wonder kid. Um, Arango would love a goal today against his former club. Steinman tried to slot Cerna Jackie, and Cerna Jackie was miles offside. Um, and now, once again, because Arango's forward, Norwich are in, but this time Bakita does make the save, and we're going to have a look at making another substitution or two. Steinman's going to come off, and we're going to bring Ariel on for that attacking substitution that I talked about. Get Ariel in there, having a little bit more attacking urgency um, and Addo can go over and play the box-to-box -box midfield role that the uh, this team selection suggestion thing keeps telling me I should be playing him in so let's try him there um, we're also going to take off Ricardo and bring on Bellico this is where it would have been nice to have it would have been nice to have Cook on the bench we'll leave him as the inverted winger and um, we're going to ask for some passion we've got 10 minutes left Perfect amount of time for 10 minutes of passion. Janino with the flick on. How does Janino win a header at five foot six? He managed it. And De Silva, weirdly, is hovering on the edge of the area. Serna Jackie's there. And that, hopefully, is going to be the winning goal. An eighth goal of the season for, season for Serna Jackie in the 85th minute. We've done this the hard way today. But hopefully, we have managed to get the job done. It's Bourne 2, Norwich 1. 85 minutes gone. Serna Jackie is good in the air. We're going to drop back to a balanced mentality. We're going to drop a little bit of praise. And hopefully, we're just going to see this game out now and end the episode where we started it. Still nicely nestled into that fourth place spot, which will lead to some Champions League qualification again for next year. And also keeps us keeping pace with, with the players at the top. In fact, Manchester United have now lost their first game. Who were they playing? It wasn't even today. When did? Who did? How did? What? When? Manchester City beating Manchester United. So we're actually only eight points off the top of the league at the moment. Interesting. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching. <laughs>